All right. On this Garlic Marketing Show, we're going to talk with one ads expert who helped one coach go from 100K a month to 600K a month by changing one sentence. I've got Luke Charlton on the show. Luke, say hi. Hey, how you going? On this episode, we're going to talk about how he spent over $20 million in paid ads for coaching, the secret power that controls, gives him control over his life, uh, why a hole, important is, a hole in the wall is so important to your business, uh, the marketing skill that he's going to teach his young daughters, and I want to teach my son, why he doesn't care what's working now in ads, uh, the high ticket problem, his seven simple 7P offer framework, the types of appointment anti-funnels he has, how he runs a $100 ad offer test, and... The that's the thing moments and how he quick and how he creates his 15 minute podcast. All this on the Garlic Marketing Show. It's gonna be an awesome episode. So much information. Courses brought to you by videocastory.com. One of the best ways to get more clients and keep more clients and use throughout your marketing is your customer stories. And we'll talk about how you can use those customer stories to learn your offer, learn the problems. But if you want to get your customer stories done, go to videocastory.com. We'll help you collect, craft, and deliver them. All right, let's get started. I want to talk about you know building an offer, why it's important, the simplicity of offers, what works right now in ads, and what's always working. Mm -hmm. But tell me a little bit about how you got into working with coaches and and consultants in this group. Yeah, so about ten years ago, and I started like a lot of people started off in like a nine to five job, and what I found is many over a decade ago, um, I don't know, fifteen years ago, I started in the nine to five corporate gig. And I found like I really enjoyed the first, say, six months because that's when you're growing and learning. And then after that, it got very monotonous. And then I would change, go to the next nine to five and it'd be great for the next few, first five months or six months. And then I'd get, you know, monotonous. And I thought, you know what, I can't do this for the rest of my life. Um, so I was continually searching, like, what am I going to do? That led me to personal training. So I did personal training for a little bit. And then I was also like, I didn't really like the beginning early in the morning, like the, late in the evening with personal trainers because you can't have that big gap in the middle of the day when people are working. And so that I'm like, you know, how do I combine my love of fitness with, you know, something else? And that's what led, I found coaching, like life coaching. So I thought, you know what, I'll combine coaching with fitness. And I became a, like a health coach. And then I realized I really didn't like doing that, but I, <laughs> but I love the, um, the marketing and sales side of things. And I found that I have like, I had like a natural ability with um, marketing and copywriting and all of that. And this was about a decade ago now. So to answer your question, that's what led me to, um, become a uh, first it was like copywriting uh, helping with copywriting and then I eventually found my way to paid traffic and put those skills into paid traffic uh, I learned from a, an amazing mentor of mine uh, back in 2016 I contracted with him and he taught me paid ads um, his name's Jason Hornung <clears throat> so that was oh, yeah. yeah 2016 and then probably in all of my bios and stuff it says I spent over 16 million but that was a few years ago I was probably spent over 20 million in, in paid ads now um, with coaches and uh, specifically on their cap scaling their campaigns wow. so I've got a lot of experience with running paid ads um, and you don't spend that amount of money I guess if you're <laughs> if you're losing money so so tell me about when did you learn how important copywriting was like when was that aha moment like i need to go to copywriting <laughs> oh man I'm, i've got like a, a three-year-old and a five-year-old so my memory i don't know i don't know if you've got kids but for whatever reason when i <laughs> when you have have kids your memory just goes or mind it anyway it's just like mush now so like the specific moment that i i don't know i i think um it was definitely, as I said, almost a decade ago, but it was about 2014 yeah. or so. That was a while ago. So yeah. And I think it was just the just the general power of like, wow, you can actually write words and and people can buy from, you know, buy from those words. Right. And what actually got me hooked on copywriting, uh, a bit, another mentor of mine, Ben, Ben Settle, I learned a lot from him in email copywriting and stuff. And people ask him, like, why do you enjoy copywriting so much? And, and it's very similar to me. I didn't realize what it was until he actually verbalized it, which was, or articulated it, which was um, power, right? Copywriting gives you a lot of power. And like, I can literally, like this week, right, I, I've written uh, sales scripts for clients, VSLs, um, all, all this stuff that gives me the power to control my life right to earn money i can I, I don't even i don't look at frameworks or anything like that i can literally just sit down write an ad write a vsl and it just comes to me because i've been doing this doing this for so long 
And that ability yeah, gives me power in my life, right? And that's what's very addic addictive with, with copywriting. So that is what hooked me into copywriting and also just seeing, as I said, like the ability to write, to sit down and write words and make money is, is, um, is again, quite powerful. It's amazing. And I always tell people that I feel copywriting is probably the most important marketing skill you can have. Like Absolutely. everyone in our agency, yeah. I'm like, yeah. they get trained on, on copywriting. I make them all handwrite copy for 90 days. Yeah. Do you agree that's probably the most powerful skill? Absolutely. Like I'm going to even teach my like I've, in terms of English, like I didn't do very well in in English uh, all throughout, like you know school, and I actually see that as a as a blessing because you know with English, right? They teach us write a certain way, very ac academic with big words, and copywriting is almost the opposite of that. You want to write very conversationally and very very simply. So by not putting an effort in in school, I actually, you know, I wasn't training myself to write academically, and I think that's one of my big. Um, uh, skills with copywriting is to write very conversationally. And so I'm going to teach my, coming back to your question, I'm, I'm going to teach my daughters how to, when they're learning English, I'm also going to teach them copywriting because it's a, it's, um, it's a really powerful way to get your message across, whether you're trying to sell, you're, we're always trying to sell people, right? But mm -hmm. whether we're literally trying to sell a product or just communicate what it is that you want, what it is that you're trying to get across, it's super, super powerful. And, but yeah, especially with business, if you can't communicate and this is the biggest thing that business owners struggle with, whether they're a coach or whether they're selling an e-commerce product. Because we're so deep in our product, we love our product, we love our program, we often speak in the features of that program. And we think mm -hmm. that the prospect is buying the features, right? We think the prospect is buying the, on the Everyone's heard this analogy. We think prospect is buying the drill, like, and we speak, we speak out the drill and how awesome the drill is and how long the battery lasts. People don't give a shit about the drill. They want the hole in the wall, right? That's yeah. why they're buying the drill. Stop talking about your drill. First, talk about the hole. And we can get to this in paid advertising, how this works. Speak to the hole in the wall. Do you want a hole in your wall? And that goes, and then they raise their hand and go, yes, I want a hole in my wall. Okay, well, here's why this drill is what you want, right? So the point is copywriting gets you to think about um, crafting a message in a way that resonates with people first. And then showing them how what you have is the answer to that. And um, yeah, it's it's everyone in the company should um, should learn copywriting. Uh, I, mm -hmm. I totally agree. I think it's a really good idea, very, very smart idea to do that. I have so many people that come to me that you know want to learn marketing and want to learn business, and I'm like, go learn copywriting. And it's funny how no, no one listens to me. They think it's like this simple thing. They think like there's all these other tricks out there. I'm like, yeah. if you do copywriting, I think we'll talk about that in a second. The rest of the stuff is just like icing on the cake, isn't it? Yeah, it's like, so you the rest of the stuff is just like what strategy you're going to put the copywriting within. So for example, we've had all heard of funnels, right? So you could have like, you know, a webinar funnel or a book funnel or a Facebook group funnel. I've created profitable campaigns for clients in every funnel that you can imagine, right? And the reason why is because I know copywriting. It's just, you know, for example, like a, a five-day challenge is basically a webinar broken up into five days. A five-day challenge is just a sales presentation. It's not actually a, you don't teach a lot of content in it. It's, it's actually to sell them on your system anyway. But I can take that same message from a five-day challenge that's broken up into five days and put it in a webinar and sell it that way. It's it's all it's all the message. It's just like what context are you putting that message in? What type of sales process are you putting are you putting that in? So that's why copywriting is again very important to learn. People think it's the funnel that makes you successful. Like what funnel am I going to do? Like a bot funnel or a SMS funnel? It's not the funnel. It's the message that makes it convert. And that's why again my copywriting is number one. It took me so long to learn that because it was like, I, you know, I, I started out like YouTube and SEO. And when I first started, like you could put a video up and people would watch videos because you didn't have to be good at it. Like, I mean, it wasn't that I was making bad videos. It was just, I mm -hmm. didn't have to think about the copy. And now you mm -hmm. have to, because there's 8,000 videos out there. Yeah, there's so much competition these days. It's crazy. Yeah, it is so crazy. So I'm going to selfishly step back. And you said you're going to teach your daughter's copywriting. How do you plan to do that? Because I want to do that. Well. <laughs> it's actually a good question. Because maybe remember, remember this from my memory. That's not really working anymore. Um, there are actually books out there that teach kids copyright. There are like children's books. I remember I think copywriters have put one. Um, I remember seeing it somewhere. There's like a children's book or maybe multiple now that teaches kids copywriting. So I, I would start. I would start there. 
um, to see if if that was relevant. Um, nice. But yeah, I have a lot of copy. I mean, I have a lot of um, copywriting books here. So I would just start with the, I wouldn't do it with too young, right? They're not going to be yeah. interested in them when they're like seven years old. But once I start getting to maybe 12, 13, um, then introducing to some more of the simple uh, ones. And, and I'd, I'd be doing it in a way that is that is fun. So I'd probably do it in a way where it's like, hey, let's come up with some headlines. And because that's the, the biggest thing with copywriting is like the headline is one of the main things, right? It's what hooks people in. So I'd say, hey, let's come up with some headlines. Here's how to do it. And then we'll test it in a campaign. Let's run some ads and see how, see how your headlines perform. I think doing it in a way that's interactive and fun and engages them as opposed to just reading theory mm-hmm. um, is something that is important with kids I and mean, with anyone really to make it more fun and exciting. So I'd, I'd probably do something like that to get them interested in it. I mean, I can't imagine any career going forward where some sort of copywriting, I mean, like even if you're making your resume have copy, like exactly right. copy, yeah. copywriting skills and that is crucial. So let's, let, you know, let's, let's go back to what you do. And that's copywriting and ads for coaches. And you don't do, you keep the simple approach, don't you? Yeah. So one of the things we spoke about just before the interview was like, you asked me like, do you want to talk about what's working now? And I said, well, I'm not really the what's, I'm not really the what's working now guy, meaning I don't focus on, okay, what's the cool latest placement that Facebook has come up with or this cool, you know, new interest hack or I don't know, whatever the latest trick is. I, I I don't focus on any of that. I literally haven't like taken my Facebook advertising course. I don't know, in like six years, but yet my campaigns continue to convert for clients. Why is that? Because I focus on the things that don't change. I focus on the things that people don't really like to talk about that aren't really as, you know, sexy, but it's what works. And what I mean by that is I focus on, the key fundamentals, which is, and number one, as I said before, like knowing your market, it's like, what do they want? What problem do they have? The hole in the wall, right? Or in the context of coaches, it might be, I my relationship is breaking apart. I'm, I'm, I, I want to save my marriage, or it could be, I'm, I'm overweight, or I want to get more dates or whatever that, whatever that problem is, right? So that's number one. If you don't have a market, you don't, there's no point in, you don't have a product. There's no, what meaning there's no product to sell. So we have to find a market and find out what their problems are, their frustrations with that problem. That's number one. So that's what I always do with clients. And this is what clients don't, they kind of do it. They kind of know their market, but they don't do it well enough. So I help them get very clear on who, who we're going after, number one, and what's their problem. It's funny, you would think that you'd assume that, and this is not just coaches, but business owners know the problem they're solving. A lot of the time, they, they actually don't know the actual problem they're solving. So that's one of the big things, even high, high level coaches. <laughs> So I help them get clear on that. That's number one, very simple, key fundamental. And then I call it a high ticket problem because we, I sell, help them sell high ticket services. What's the, what's something they're going to spend three, four, five, ten thousand dollars to solve. And then number two. So that's the first key fundamental. The number two is like, how do we create a, a really good offer to solve that problem? An offer that speaks directly to that problem but because we're in a crowded marketplace and so much competition, it's like what's unique and different about this offer? And for coaches, it's like their system, right? What's why is this system better than the next competitive system? Okay, okay so helping them communicate not only the the like to that problem that yes, I can solve that problem, and here's why my program, my system is the best option for you, right? And all the, all these benefits. Yeah, oh, um, I agree. So that's the two. It's like your if you're marketing your offer, a problem and solution, right? And learning how to communicate in a way that your offer in a way that resonates with that market. That's like what I do every single day. And I definitely want to talk to the offer because I think everyone get, almost everyone gets the offer wrong, understanding mm-hmm. what an offer is. And it's like, I don't know, for some reason I can't show you what an offer is, but really explain it to someone until like, it's for me is a difficult thing if they don't get it. I can explain it very simply. I have a very simple framework. Oh, I'm happy to say. Sure. Yeah, let's okay. do it. So an offer is, and this is where business owners, coaches, e-commerce people get, get confused, which I said before. They think their offer is their coaching or they think their offer is their, um, they think like the, this is this is their offer, right? The, the, the physical thing or the actual program, the templates, the whatever that the person gets, like the physical stuff or the stuff that they log into, like the course, right? That's not the offer. That that's 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 the deliverable. The offer is um, 
for me, it's like, what's the result that you're promising? That's the offer. It's like, hey, I will help you get 30 clients in the next 30 days, right? That's generally the offer is, is what, what's the result that you're promising? Just think of that on the simplest terms. Um, and there's more, and I'll go into like what you can add to that offer, but simplest terms, what is the result that you're promising? If someone's overweight, I will help promise to make, you know, lose weight. And then you can put a time frame on that. I'll help you lose 30 pounds in the next 30 days, right? So you can have a, a time frame to kind of enha enhance the offer. But at the end of the day, the offer is just like, are you speaking to that main problem? Yes, I can help you get more clients. Yes, I can help you get more dates. Yes, I can help you lose weight, whatever. That's that's kind of like the core of the offer. Then you can add a time frame to that, right? I can help you get 30 clients in 30 days, as I said. So the offer is just the literal, the promise. What are you promising? That's that's what I consider as like the core of the offer. And then once you've hooked prospects in with that, like, yes, I I want that. I want that result that you're promising. Again, that this applies to e-commerce products as well, right? So for example, if you're selling like a teeth whitening thing, right? The the offer is not like the, the tube of stuff that you get to put in your teeth. The offer is I can help whiten your teeth. That's that's the offer. Now we can, um, and then you can package up an offering. Everyone's probably heard of that before. Is So that's when you're, you add in, okay, I, I'm going to help you get 30 clients in 30 days. Now, the way that we do that is with this specific system, step one, step two, step three, step four, right? And then we have a, a price on that. So there's like seven Ps that I I um, help coaches with to package up an offer. So, so to put this all in context, so number one, the first P is the program name. Like what's the name of your program? It's not that important, but what's the name of your program? Number two, what's the promise? Right? So that's the main thing, like what results are you promising and then um, what time frame? And then again, you can enhance that. Like, so for example, I'll help you get 30 clients in 30 days without running paid ads or spending a dollar on marketing or without setting up any complex, without any funnel at all, right? So you can have a without statement to, again, enhance it. So prom the program name, the promise, the process, that's all of you, that's like the system, right? The process, um, the promise, process, so the, the program name, the promise, the process, the price, What's the price, right? So that's part of the offer is the price. But the price is not an offer. That's just the price. Then you've got the premiums, right, which is the bonuses. Okay. Then you can add the pledge, which is another word for the guarantee, right? The pledge is the guarantee. So I will help you get 30 clients in 30 days without a funnel or spending a dollar on ads. Um, and if you don't achieve that result, this is what I will do for you. That's the guarantee. I will give you your money back. I will double your money back. I will work with you for free until we do get that result. So this, the pledge is like, what guarantee can you add? Again, people confuse a guarantee with an offer. It's not, it's just a way to enhance the offer. And the final part, uh, P is the, um, is pressure, right? So you can add like a scarcity or urgency, another way of saying that scarcity or urgency to get people to buy now. So that would be, um, hey, if you sign up today on my program, I'll give you 30% off. Or, hey, um, scarcity could be, we've only got three spots left in this mastermind you have to invest now. We've only got three of these products left you have to buy now. So there's scarcity, which is limited amount left, or urgency, which is you've got to buy by a certain time frame. Otherwise, you lose, you lose a discount or you lose maybe certain premiums, bonuses. So those are the seven Ps to like, that's how I help coaches package up an offer. Like that's a full packaged offer. But again, at the very core of it is the promise. If you don't get that promise right, which a lot of business owners don't, then the rest of the stuff doesn't matter. Like the system doesn't matter. You're not, you need to speak their language by that very first result that you're promising, the outcome that you're pr promising. Does that make sense? It makes complete sense. And I see so many people put so many features in there that I'm like, no one knows what this is. No one cares about it. Like, yeah. I say, you know, I say that to people. No one wants a digital agency. They want leads. They want customers. No, you know, yeah. no, no, no one wants Facebook ads. They want yeah. new customers, right? And why do they want those new customers? They they want to, you know, have a thriving coaching business that you know, and the freedom, etc., around it. And it's yeah. that promise that you're developing. So now you take this offer, right? How do you make sure it's a good offer? Well, you follow the fundamentals. Well, first of all, as I said, you research the market is really critical. And you and if you do that well enough, then you and you've got experience, like I do, I can look at a market and, and go, okay, we've researched it well. 
here's our offer. I can look at it again from experience and go, okay, yeah, that, that's a pretty good offer based on what I know about the market and also the competitors. So that's part of your research. Look at what other competitors are doing. Look at their messaging. And I can go, yeah, that's. I think that's good enough to test, right? So we come up with what we think is a, is a great offer for the market. Then to answer your question, how do you know? Well, you, at the end of the day, you don't you, until, you, until you put it out there. And so this is why I love advertising because I can know within like a hundred dollars whether whether an offer is work like in a my offers are generally there's different types of offers right there's a lead magnet offer there's an appointment offer like an offer to get someone on the phone and then there's like a program offer right so when I'm running ads I'm generally for clients where where we've got an offer to get an appointment and then when they get on the phone then we have an offer to get them sell them into the program so there's different offers anyway in terms of an appointment offer I can I can spend like 100 bucks, 150 bucks and know whether it's resonating like you know very quickly with paid ads whether the offer is working or not. And if it if it doesn't, turn off the campaign. Let's test a different offer. Let's try these other ones that we came up with and and test that. So it's just yes. it's just an iterative process. And, and again, I, I love advertising because I can do that process very 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 quickly. What do you feel? Okay, so now we, we're not doing any crazy funnels, right? You're not like doing I don't 100, know. 100 step funnels. It's just straight into an appointment. What is the criteria for a good ad? Are you are you testing out long form, short form, video, imagery? What kind of ads do you like to work with? Yeah, it depends on. Um, so there's two kind of appointment funnels that I. And I don't really love the word funnel because they're so simple. Um, but there's two, for lack of a better word, there's two types of appointment funnels that I that I run. Okay, so the first one is um, this is generally for newer coaches that aren't as well known, and that's a lead magnet to consult funnel. So literally in the ad, we just advertise a lead magnet. It could be like, yeah, some type of free guide, a checklist, whatever. And for those types of ads, like the, the copy is like three to four sentences. It's very short because a lead magnet, it sells itself, right? So I have a lead magnet that I advertise called the nine Facebook ads that have landed over a thousand coaching clients. It's just a, you know, a swipe file of nine ads plus a little workshop that explains how they work. Anyway, the name of it, right? The nine Facebook ads that have landed over a thousand clients, that, that sells itself. You don't really need much copy to for a coach to go, oh, I'd like to learn what those nine ads are. So the copy for those lead ads are very short and people click and they opt in because the barrier to entry to is free, right? They just put the name and email and they get it. So those ads are very short and they're usually just an image ad. We rarely will we do a video ad for a, a lead magnet to consult. And then on the, on the next page after they opt in, then that's where we have a short video, like a three minute video where we pitch a free call. It's just a 15 minute call. So that's one. That's a quite a simple funnel. And then come back to your question. The other one is if the coach has an offer that's quite unique in the marketplace uh, or they have really big credibility, um, then we will generally go add straight to an, an appointment. Um, so we literally will... Um, We'll have a video in the ad and it'll go to a page with the with the calendar. Sometimes it will send them to a page with a five-minute VSL just to explain a bit more about what's going to happen on the call. But yeah, it's it's really that it's really that simple. Um, and for those for those campaigns, the ads will be a little bit longer because we have to explain, hey, here's what the off here's who I am, here's what the offer is about. It's a free strategy generally, and here's what we're going to do on the call. Uh, and here's what you what you want to do next. So there's a bit more explanation if, if when we're going when we're pitching a free call in an ad that does require a bit more copy. Does require a bit and, and a, generally a video as well because videos generally get more attention. Um, yeah, so that that uh, I only recommend that if you know what you're doing, going straight to an, an appointment. Yeah, and you know it's because you said I'll, I'll know if an offer works right away, like within a hundred dollars. Yeah. Is it because is it because the ad performance? Is it because of the clicks? Is it because of the audience? yeah, it's the click costs generally. Because I so there's working in different markets, you get different click costs. So for example, if you're B2B, like if I'm in the coaching market, um, like a, a good click cost for a lead magnet is between three or four dollars or so. So I'm getting opt-ins between five to eight dollars. So if my click cost is like ten dollars, like after like say 50 bucks, I'm like, oh, this is not resonating. I'll just I'll just turn that off. Um, so I can tell quite quickly based on the click cost, whether it's worth like kind of keep keep going. And then I know like baseline appointment costs, depending if it's B2B or B2C, right? So if it's B2C, if, it, if it's got a good click cost, like some ads will have like $2 clicks in B2C, one to $2 mm -hmm. clicks. And I'm like, okay, we'll spend up to $100 on this ad. 
And if there's no appointment, then we'll then we'll turn it off because we should have had at least you know one or two appointments by a hundred dollars with it in, in B to C. So I can get people clicking through and then they don't convert, or I can get no people clicking through, right? And then we can just turn it off. So it just depends. I'll look at the click cost first, then I will look at the appointment cost. And then if that's working, then finally we look at the is like what's the what are the sales people converting at? So we just it's just yeah, you have to start with the the earliest data you can to make those decisions. And then you move on to the appointments. If that's working, then you move on to the finally the sales calls. That's great advice. And you know, you've got to test it, you've got to get it out there. And so it seems pretty simple. Uh, it seems straightforward. <laughs> what are the pitfalls, the mistakes that you see people making in this system? Yeah, we, we kind of already dis discussed it, which is they think that the, the reason that the campaigns aren't converting is because they don't have the latest secret like interest audience or they're not doing like re these complex retargeting. Cam I literally I hardly do any retargeting campaigns, especially since the iOS updates, they don't work as well as they did. But they think that the reason why they're not successful is because they don't have this bot funnel or this SMS funnel or this Facebook group funnel. Again, it's nothing to do with that. You can, it's, it's the message, right? It's, it's because you haven't crafted a message that fits that, that market. So pitfalls are, not knowing your market well enough and not being able to speak speak their language. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, it's simple, but not easy, right? It's yeah. it's hard. I mean, even for me, right? I, like I have mentors that look at, at my messaging because even for myself and my own, own campaigns, like, you know, I'm too close to my own, to my own messaging. And so it's, 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 it is simple. I think, especially obviously with someone experienced looking from the outside in, it's very easy for me to identify these problems. But yeah, if you're a coach and you're just deep in your own subject, it's it's very hard. And so I said, I wrote an email about this a while back called the curse of coaching knowledge, because as I said, you're you're so deep in your own, this applies for all business owners, you're so deep in your own product, your own knowledge about the industry, you just you naturally just talk features, right? You naturally yep. just talk about your product and it doesn't and just it doesn't resonate. So the best thing you can do is just have that awareness and hire someone to help you craft a message, I think is you can do it yourself. Uh, it's just much faster to have someone help you with it. I mean, much faster, much, much faster. And you might not ever get there. I mean, I, I literally this morning, you know, I do this all the time. I look at people's offers. I look at the ads and I'm like, oh, I can tell what's wrong. And I had to have someone look at our, our lead man because I was like, I don't know what's wrong. And he's like, this, this, this. I'm like, of course. But yeah, I know. It's funny when <laughs> people point it out. You're like, oh yeah, why didn't <laughs> so why didn't I say that? Like I said, I, I call it the same thing. It's curse of the expert. You are yeah. so deep into your expertise. And I mean, but that's lawyers shouldn't be their own lawyers, doctors shouldn't be their own doctors, and, right, right, and right. no one should be their own marketer all the time. Like I can understand when you're getting started, but really if you if you want to get going, you need someone like yourself, I, you know, that's also seen a lot of stuff because things change. And yes. you're seeing what, what's going on in, you know, like you said, like you knew the ad cost, what it should be right now. You know, when when to stop retargeting. That's all important stuff. This is fantastic. So tell me, who is the perfect person to give you a call? That's a, a great question. The perfect person, yeah, is someone that's already running advertising. They're a high ticket service professional. Generally, it's a, a coach or consultant, but they're already running ads um, and they want to scale those campaigns to far greater heights, right? So if they want to go from spending $300 a day on ads to $3,000 a day on ads and more. So that's someone that's already got like a converting offer uh, is someone that I can help get results with very quickly. Yeah. And and if someone wants to sign up, they can just go to uh, lukecharlton.com, correct? And uh, Yeah. So if you want to learn more about me, just go to lukecharlton.com. Um, there's also a link if you want more than happy to fit for your audience, offer a free um, like one-on-one -on -one consult. So if you go to um, Luke's free game plan, I'll jump on a phone with you for free, map out a whole game plan for you to help you scale your campaigns. And um, you're free to leave with that game plan at the end of that call. But yeah, so this is, I just enjoy helping people. So more than happy to do that for your audience. Just go to Luke's free game plan. And it's uh, you be the only people that would get the most benefit out of that is that if you're already running ads. So just make sure that you've already got an ad campaign that's going. Yeah, awesome. And that's a great offer. So we'll put the links to all that in the show notes. I, I love sto marketing stories. What's your favorite success story that you've had? My favorite success, actually, you know what? Speaking about offers, I don't know if this is my favorite, but it's it's one that 
really sticks out. So I, I have my own podcast, just a, like a 10 minute one that I do every, every other day. And it, the title was something like um, how I three X her business with one sentence. And basically we just, yeah, we changed one sentence in my, my client's offer. And she went from 150 K revenue a month to uh, over 500. She was over 600. So it's probably even more than three X. She was doing between 150 K to 200 K a month. And she went to 600 and something a month. And it was just, just one, one sentence that we changed. And that wow. sentence was her offer. It was the, it was the offer. It was the, it was the outcome. So basically just for some context, she helps people launch their own e-commerce store. And um, so basically she shows them how to pick a profitable product and she builds the store for them. And then she shows them how to run the ads to generate, you know, sales. So basically the offer, and she didn't really have any, her offer was just like, I will help you do that. Basically I'll help you create an e-commerce store. That, that was her offer. So I thought, you know what? I think we can do better than that. I said, how about we create an offer? Where it's like, cause she gets great results for her clients. So I said, you know what, if I was in your shoes, this is what I would promise, right? The promise is the offer. I would say, hey, I will get you an e-commerce, I will build you an e-commerce store. And if it doesn't generate 10K a month within 90 days, uh, we'll give you a, we'll give you a refund. And that was it. I believe, you know, we'll create an e-commerce store that generates 10K a month within 90 days, or we'll give you a refund and we'll set it up for you and blah, blah, blah. That one sentence, like that offer, we just created a, an ad that goes straight to the calendar, uh, as I said, it brought in a ton of appointments and a, a ton of a ton of new clients. She actually had to turn off the campaigns because it was it's just um, too, too many come, coming through. So that's the power of an offer. But again, it's not it's not the offer. Everyone now I've got this book here. Everyone's heard of this book. Uh, let me see. I don't want this to fall over. Yeah. Everyone's heard of this book, right? The Alex Hamozzi <laughs> book, hundred million dollar office. Everyone's heard of it. Yes. Well, and, everyone in our circles, right? <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah, like books like this are good, but I, it actually, the, the downside of this, it, 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 again, it wasn't the offer that made it convert. It was that I was speaking to what the market wanted. It was finding out what the market wanted and then giving them that. And so everyone always focuses on the offer because that's the tangible stuff, but it's not really, it was me thinking about like, okay, what does the market actually want? Like, what are their objections, right? They, they want to, you know, what they want cash flow. They want someone to kind of do it for them. They want to make sure that there's no risk, right? So if it doesn't work out, they'll get their money back. So I'm thinking about that. So I'm going, how do I take what my client has and and communicate in a way that speaks to what they want? And yes, books like this are good because it'll give you the framework for that communication, but it doesn't really go into the main part, which is knowing the market and, and finding out about them and, and their main problem and their frustrations. Um, so that's, so that's what I'm, I'm probably going to write a book in the future, um, about that called high ticket problems. I would say, I don't know nice. when I'll get around to that, but that's what that will be about. It's like, yeah, the offer is great, but knowing how to find a high ticket problem is the most important fundamental. It's the board like that. No one want, really wants to learn how to do that. They want to learn offers and cool stuff, but this yeah. won't help unless you know the market first. It's so true. It's so true. It's like, that's what I tell people that, you know, video case story. That's we go and interview. I'm like, interview your clients first, talk to them, talk about yeah. their problems. Cause they will tell you what they're, they will give you your copy. Yeah, they will. They'll give you all your copy. It's crazy. Like they will literally give you the language to use in your, that's why I say you don't have to like to be a good copywriter. I don't even, a lot of the language that I, I don't even come up with it. I just kind of steal, right. I steal the prospect's own language and I just put that in a, in a sales letter or an email or whatever. And so I'm just reflecting back what they're telling me. That's all it's copywriting is. You just reflect back what your prospects tell you. So showing up, putting up a mirror. You make it sound simple, but it's 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 simple, but not easy. Because I think it's it's listening through and, and really like listening to someone and going, that's the thing, right? I'm yes. sure you, you, do you have those moments, right? Where you're listening to them and you're like, that's it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For me, that's a lot of that is um, because I said we're, we're in such competitive markets. Most of my clients... The that's the thing moment is the thing that's unique about their offer. Like, you know, a lot, a lot of the times when clients describe to me what they do, it's like, well, this just sounds like every other coach. And so I have to dive into their system, their program and pull it apart and learn it inside out and pull out that one thing that they're doing that is, um, that's unique and different to everyone else and putting that at, at the forefront. Like that's, 
Um, an example of that is um, that's a lot of what I do. So I get jump on a phone with a client, I'll, I'll interview them about their offer. And so I recently did this for a client and she, like I was interviewing her because she actually helps coaches as well. And I said, how do you, how do you get results with coaches? And she's like, well, I just kind of, you know, just jump on the phone with them. We'll, we'll create a customized strategy and uh, then we'll implement it. You know, we could do a webinar. We could do this. We could do that. And it's like, okay, well, this is all stuff I've heard before. And so I just kept asking questions and questions and questions. And she said, well, I have this podcast. I only have about 500 people that listen in, you know, each week. I just do it once a week. And, and I get 30K a mastermind clients from that. I thought, well, that's pretty cool. So you have a, I call it like a mic. I gave it a name, right? A micro podcast. Like a, this is part of the marketing speak that we have to do. You make up a name, micro podcast. Mm-hmm. So that's called a unique mechanism, by the way. And this is what I do for clients. I help identify what the unique mechanism is. So we're creating a, a campaign with the headline is like how I use micro podcasts to sign 30K clients, something like that, right? So I'm taking what this little unique thing with, about a whole business and we're putting it at the front and we're teaching that micro podcast strategy in a short VSL. And we're going to see how that how that converts. Um, so that, yeah, so it's, that's the thing moment is like, what's my client's unique mechanism. And that applies to e-commerce products as well. Within the e-commerce people like it, your product will have something unique about it. That's different to everyone else. And you have to bring that, um, to the forefront. So a, a good example of that is, and this has been going on for like over a hundred years. So there's a story about this copywriter who was writing an ad, I don't know who it was, um, famous copywriter. He was writing an ad for a beer company. Mm-hmm. And um, so he went to the factory and learned how, again, going through their product, learned all about how the beer process worked. And and he was interviewing one of the um, the Brewsters or whatever they're called who makes it. And he's like, oh, how does this process work? He's like, oh, this is a this is our, our triple distilling process. And, he, and the copywriter was like, oh, that's pretty cool. That's unique. And they're like, oh, no, everyone does the triple distilling process. But here's the thing. No one was talking about it in, you know, in their marketing messages. So he took that and he put that at the forefront of the beer ad and that all of a sudden brought in way more sales. So a unique mechanism, this is really important to understand. It's, it doesn't have to be totally unique, but it, it has to feel unique to the market. So if your competitors are doing it, but they don't communicate it, that's fine. You can bring that out. But I, again, ideally you want it to be actually unique so that your competitors can't kind of just say the same thing. Um, but yeah, that's how a unique mechanism works. It works for e-commerce, it works for coaches, but it's very important in today's marketplace that you find that thing that's unique. So a bit of a tangent there. <laughs> no, no, but that's, it's, it's important. Like, it, it, and it's, there's so many ways to find that unique mechanism. And I think that's a whole nother episode, but I think it's absolutely crucial yeah. is finding yeah. that unique mes- mechanism and putting that process out there and going, this is our unique mechanism. Because I see people put processes out there and yeah. they don't have that. They're like, step one, two, three. And I'm like, that looks like everyone else's. That's fantastic. I mean, this has been incredible. Luke, thank you so much. We'll put a link to in the show notes. Are, do you spend much time on social media besides running ads? Not really, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, hate, I hate logging into Facebook. But um, you have a podcast, correct? I do. Yeah, yeah. So the podcast is, I mean, if you just search my name, you'll find it, but it's called the 15 Minute Client, because that's the name of my program, the 15 Minute Client Podcast. And yeah, it's a top, actually it's a top ranked podcast. So I would just like 10, five to 10 minute episodes almost every day. And I want to talk about that too, because that's, that's a whole nother story. Almost every day. That's, that's commitment. Well, it's easy, dude, it's so easy. So, and that's what I like with creating content. I, I, I was like, well, if I'm going to do a podcast, I want to make it really easy. So I literally, when I get an idea, I'll just pick up my phone and I'll use the, the note, the voice memos app. Mm-hmm. I'll just hit this record button here. And I uh, hit record and just tell my story. And then I go share to like Dropbox and then my editor just does the rest. That's it. So I'll name it. And just, I don't have to worry about it after that. So it's so easy to get that content out. And I, I really enjoy it because it is, it is that easy. I love it. You're inspiring me in so many ways. And this <laughs> was great. You know, it's like, these are fundamentals, but hearing them again, different takes on them, different ways of looking at them. It's fundamentals that win games. Yep. And, and having the right coach, like, and, and coaches should be hiring a consultant like yourself. I mean, it, that's not a whole story. It's like, I, I always get upset when coaches want to spend, you know, $15,000 to charge $15,000, but won't spend 
fifteen hundred dollars. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But that's a whole other story too. But we'll put a link to the fifteen minute podcast. We'll put a link to the the Luke's free game plan uh, yep. and all that in the show notes. But Luke, thank you so much for being on the Garlic Marketing Show. No worries. I had a lot of fun. Thanks for having me on. Thank you so much for all for taking Luke and I on your journey. Make sure to take him up on that offer. If you're a coach, consultant, and you're running ads, that's an amazing offer. I will put a link in the show notes, but this has been I and Garlic and the Garlic Marketing Show.